I started as a picture editor. That has been kind of my school. I was mainly influenced by the great documentary photographers and I was making my own work on the side. I just loved the idea of getting out and meeting people I was not supposed to meet. So I started this work on the last wild beach of France and this was my first long-term project as a photographer. I arrived there and I saw all these people. It's actually quite a sight. Everybody on that beach was back in childhood. There is no electricity, there is no water. You need to figure out a way to make it work. It's like liberty. I was doing classic and straight photojournalism. I wanted to document really the way they were living. But the more I advanced in the project, the more I thought I should look at these people in a more poetic way. There is still that documentary code, but it's telling a lot more to me. I finished uh, the series Pierre Manson and I did a book and I quit my job at the same time. So this is the year where I fully became uh, a photographer. And I wanted to move away from this classic documentary approach. When I traveled in India in 2010, I bought the book Ramayana, which is the most famous tale for Indian people. The story was so old and at the same time so modern, it was telling a lot about contemporary India. If you travel to India, you see pictures of the Ramayana. It's everywhere. The Ramayana takes place in real locations. There is a trail you can follow from the north of the country to the south. And Indian people do that. It builds a connection to the land. It's not only fiction, it's grounded in the real India. For them, the Ramayana, it was not the real life, but it was not a fiction as well. It lied like somewhere in the middle. And then as a photographer, the question was, how do you approach photography-wise a story which is not a fiction and which is not real? The Ramayana is the story of Rama and Sita, prince and princess. It starts with the birth of the two heroes and it ends with their death. It's the cycle of life. It was four past five in the morning. The sun rose over the mighty Ayodhya kingdom. The holy men lifted their hands above their heads. A slow chant rippled across the calm waters. Everyone had just one prayer for their beloved and dutiful king, Dashrat. They prayed that a son would be born to him. The firstborn was Kaushalya's son, Rama. His angelic face radiated a brilliance that filled the room. When I started the Meet of Two Souls, I was shooting in the same way I was shooting in Piemonson. Only the country was different. Approaching the people in the same way, shooting landscapes the same way. After a few trips, I realized that it was not the right way to photograph for that particular project. I thought that the line between fiction and documentary was more interesting to me. 
from there on, I decided to ask the local people to play for me scenes of the Ramayana. And this is where the project shifted. I'm not working as a film director in the sense that I leave them a lot of space to express themselves. What is your favorite characters? Is there a scene you would like to play for me, for the camera? They are free to choose the clothes they will be wearing, the way they will be acting. It's very open. I took a picture of a young couple and they were not married, but they really wanted to do it, but we had to hide to do the pictures because in some parts of India, it's still not right to show yourself in public when you are not yet married. I met a lot of young couples which were in that situation. Maybe you're not from the same caste. Maybe your parents don't even want you to get married. So it's very interesting to work with young people and to give them a space that they don't have in their everyday life. I was learning what the Ramayana meant to them through that process. One main theme I am addressing is the woman's status in India. For some people, the Ramayana is very patriarchal. The historical story is told through the eyes of Rama, the man of the story. So for me, it was very important to work with a woman Indian writer and to reverse the perspective. My Ramayana is told to Sita's point of view, to a woman perspective. As Moor was about to speak, Janak said, wait, I hear something. Janak got down from his horse as gently as he could. He went to the cauliflower patch and stepped back in surprise. The gurgling sound that he was hearing belonged to a tiny baby. You will be my daughter. You will be known as Sita. Sita, that means daughter of the earth. Even though she had no idea at this moment, Sita was going to be Rama's wife. Her path was going to be littered with thorns at every step. Would she have the courage to find her way? I started to shoot with a large format camera at the same moment where I started doing the stage pictures. What was good working with the large format camera is that I would, I would set the, the camera on the tripod and then I am able to work with the actors, the local people, toward the scene we want to get for the camera. It slowed on the people that are in front of you. They know that you will take only one picture, maybe two. I think more as a painter than as a photographer. Also, I decided to mix up pictures that are completely staged and pictures that are non-staged. It brings a blurry aspect to the project. When photography was brought to India by the English, the bourgeoisie had the choice of having their portraits hand-painted by a local painter. These painters, very few of them are still in activity. So the tradition is dying because obviously color film and digital now is available everywhere. So these painters, they don't have work anymore. And I thought it could be very interesting to build a collaboration with a painter in India and to give him black and white prints so that he hand paint over them. 
So the painter is not with me when I'm shooting the pictures. He doesn't know the colors of the clothes people were wearing, or if the sky was pinky or blue. It should be like slightly off color-wise, but still close to the realities, so that people wonder where they are. You don't know if you're looking at a picture from today's India or if it was shot in the 1950s. There is this belief that photography stops time when you click the picture. So for me, it was very interesting to play with that idea. Is photography really showing a certain point of time? Or is it showing a lot more? Maybe there is hidden layers beneath the photograph itself. I think there is a very interesting space to investigate. Rama was laying down in Koshalya's lap. Son, the wind is changing. The time has come for you to lay down the cricket bat and instead pick up the bow. Rama took a deep breath and gathered his brothers at their favorite spot near the well and told them he was leaving. I will go with my brother, announced Lakshman. They passed through the door into the wilderness of the forest that were home to demons and fierce animals. They knew nothing of what the future would hold, except that the journey to become warriors had begun. When I started the project, I never knew it would be so big. We came up with this idea of doing seven books because the Ramayana is divided into seven chapters. And we had this idea of not waiting for the project to end in two or three or four years, but to publish book at the same time I was working. The idea was to propose to the readers to travel in India at the same time that I was traveling. It's like a TV series. You follow the same characters through their adventures. I realized photography can be very different things. It can be photojournalism, it can be fiction, it can be something in the middle. In that sense, to me, photography is not about truth or false. It's more about what, as an artist, you wish to create. I think I will never do straight documentary again. Once you leave that field and you see all the possibilities, it would be very difficult to get back to that way of telling stories. There is no rules whatsoever. It's just much more interesting, much more challenging. If there is no challenge, you just get used to the same old formula again and again, and this is not what I want to do. It's great to wake up every morning not knowing what the journey will be. There is a lot to explore.